So our Global Changemaker Seminar has come to a close. Um, it's three days of very intensive discussions, role plays, um, visits to the Foreign Office, to the Bundestag. Um, and I'm really happy that I'm here with one of my one of our Global Changemakers. Um, and um, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, so my name is Katarina and I'm from Slovakia. I have been working for the Slovak Prime Minister's Office on European Affairs. And it's my pleasure to be here. It's been a great, uh, great workshop. And uh, Katarina, um, you are not completely new with Aspen, right? How did you come to Aspen and why, um, why, why, why do you stay engaged? So I actually got to know Espen. I was nominated by my boss who was a Sherpa for a prime minister because she herself is an Aspen Central Europe alumni and she actually received a leadership award from Aspen Central Europe. So first I did the Aspen Central Europe leadership program, which was really nice. And now I got nominated, fortunately, which I'm really grateful for by Aspen Central Europe to be here. And uh, looking at democracy, um, our democracies are all under threats um, from different kinds of sources, but we seem to be at a point um, of, um, which is pivotal. Um, so we've, every one of us really has to do their share. What inspires you um, to fight for democracy and for resilient um, societies? It actually Aspen inspires me because I think people that I've met over the past three year, uh, three days are such a huge inspiration. The fact that everyone is so engaged, uh, willing to fight for democracy, bring their own ideas to the table. It gives me so much energy and hope that we can do many good things and we can ensure that uh, democracy stays strong despite the challenges. Because what I realize is that in many countries, we actually face the same challenges, whether it is, you know, the rise of populism or uh, lack of trust in institutions. The only difference is that some countries are more more threatened by them because they are less resilient. So they don't have the, uh, the ability to really face the crisis and to basically uh, challenge the crisis. So that's my kind of conclusion, but it gives me a hope that we, once we learn how to be resilient, and once we learn how to help our countries to be resilient, and that's also thanks to sharing know-how and be best practices, we can face all the challenges together. <laughs> and uh, if and when we face all the challenges together, um, the emphasis is on together. <laughs> so um, what would you recommend to other young people who want to get involved and want to induce change? So specifically in Slovakia, I feel like uh, young people feel like, th like they have no voice which means that they eventually lose interest in politics. And I think we need to do the exact opposite. We need to actually make sure that also our educational system teaches us about democracy, what it means, uh, teaches us that it's important to follow what's happening in politics, because just because we don't care about politics doesn't mean that politics doesn't care about us. So I would encourage them to actually be engaged and follow the news, but also not only in Slovakia, but also around the world, including the EU, of course, and because they do have a voice and they do have power. That's, that's the nice thing about democracy, that everyone has power, if you know that you have it. Well, you certainly have power, Katarina. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today um, and over the last three days, and I very much hope to see uh, you soon again. Definitely. Thank you so much, likewise. If there's anything I can help with, help with just please let me know. <laughs>